Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I brought home this 5,500 watt Honeywell generator. This one I found on Craigslist for only 130 bucks. According to the seller, he recently added fuel to the tank, pulled the engine over, and got absolutely nothing. So he thinks it needs a new carburetor, and I'd have to agree, but I don't think we just need a new carburetor. The tank is in pretty bad shape. When I got there, the first thing I did was pull the cover off. And if the top or the underside of the cap looks like that, you know the tank is in pretty bad shape. Not to mention the smell coming out of here. It's really bad. It smells like paint thinner or turpentine. And you can just kind of get a glimpse at what's in there. There's just a lot of rust. So the tank definitely needs to be dealt with. I'm sure the carburetor looks just as bad. Uh, the engine, it turns over fine and has very good compression, minimal leak down. So I don't think we're going to have any issues there. But before fixing up the carb and the tank, I want to hear the engine run at least long enough to know that it sounds good and the generator makes power. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. But first, let's check the oil. There's plenty of oil. Needs to be changed, but we'll worry about that later. Gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll turn the fuel valve on, but even if that carburetor was good, it's doubtful this fuel could run an engine, but you never know. Very nice. The engine, it sounds good, and the generator is making power. So we're only dealing with a fuel issue here. And in this case, I think it's going to be a pretty easy fix because a couple weeks back, I picked up two Predator generators with blown engines. And although those couldn't be saved, the fuel tanks were in good shape. And the Predator, it is a Honda clone, just like this. And I believe the tank is the same size. So it should be as easy as draining this tank, uninstalling it, and sliding that Predator tank in place. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to get this tank drained, uninstalled, probably deal with the carburetor before putting the Predator tank back on. And in this case, it's also going to be an easy fix because half a year ago, HIPAA was running a promotion, and they sent me a clone carburetor for a GX390 which this is a clone of. So I've been feeling kind of bad because I just haven't had an opportunity to use this until today. So I'll get that dirty carb off. I'll open it up just to see how bad it is. But regardless of what I see, I'm going to put that carb on with the Predator tank and we should be good to go. I'm going to start just by pulling the airbox off so I can get access to the fuel line where it enters the carburetor. This is all clogged up, and yeah, it's going to be a little more effort to get it out. Let's see what's in the carb. Well, that's a good sign. 
Usually if the carb's really bad, that drain would be plugged. So, I would say this carb could be cleaned up pretty easily. But, we'll stick with the hippo one. Fuel looks pretty good. Doesn't really match the smell. So, yeah, maybe the guy drained out the bad stuff and he did actually put fresh fuel in the tank and that smell just might be kind of what's coated on the tank. I'm not sure. So I was planning on not trying to reuse this fuel and just recycle it with the hazardous waste collection, but yeah, that actually looks decent. I'm gonna swap out the fuel line for a longer one. Should help with the draining. Yeah, that's gonna take a while. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Not sure what I did, but it is draining now. And it doesn't seem to matter the position of the fuel valve. Right now it should be on, which it is. And now it's off. I see no change, but it doesn't matter. It's coming out, so it's gonna take a while. Anyway, you get the idea. This is going to take a while. It took 15 minutes to get that one bottle out, and I'd say we have at least five or six more to go. Anyway, I'm um, having second thoughts. I don't think I'm going to reuse this fuel. It is pretty bad, and I don't want to clog up the filters on my car. The big issue is I can only recycle 20 gallons a year, so I really have to be kind of selective as far as what I'm going to save for recycling but I think this qualifies, not to mention that puddle of fuel on the floor. That should have evaporated in a couple minutes. And it's been 15 minutes, it's still there. So yeah, this fuel, definitely bad. The fuel, it's finally out of the tank, so we're ready to proceed. And it's actually 12 hours later. That puddle of fuel did finally evaporate, but it did leave a stain on the floor and fuel, I mean, it should just evaporate on cement and not leave a trace. So, yeah, definitely bad fuel, but I'm curious how bad. So I'm going to do a little bit of a test and see if the stuff even still burns. Nope, that does not burn at all. Nope.
The setup's a little bit odd. The choke mechanism. This type of mechanism usually has a vacuum servo and a line going over to the intake manifold. I haven't actually seen this type used before without that vacuum servo that should be right here. So I don't know if they just had extra parts when they were building this and used this instead. I mean, it shouldn't matter, but it is kind of odd. Usually those two go together. All right, let's take a peek in here. I think we need a 13 millimeter for that. Let me grab that. It's actually a 14. Not bad, actually. That is shocking. So I, if the jets are clear, I would say this, this carburetor would run. And they might actually be clear because the fuel that was in there, as we just saw, doesn't even burn. Let's just check the jets real quick. This is not a jet, but it is the fuel pickup and that is clear. Main jet's in the middle. Let's get that out. Main jet. It's clear. Let's check the pilot. It's hard to tell. They usually are. But regardless, this carb is actually in very good condition. I think it wouldn't even have to go through the ultrasonic. Just run through everything with the wire real quick. Make sure it's clear. And it should be good to go. But I've had this hanging around for too long. So let's give this a try and see how it does. Yep, this should work fine. We have new gaskets, came with a plug and a filter, which we don't need in this case, as well as a fuel line. And this is the different style carb. This is actually what I normally see on engines that don't have the servo controlled choke. So I'll just swap it over to use this type. I think it's easier to use anyway. Uh, these carbs I've had very good luck with, and they fit pretty much everything from 389 cc's all the way up to 300 and 59 cc's as far as Honda clones go, and Hondas, they'll run them as well. So let's just get this on, throw the tank on, and 
Try it out. These connectors are keyed, you can only plug them in the right way. This carburetor, it does have an adjustable pilot needle, and usually a good starting point is around two, maybe two and a half turns out. I have received carburetors before, not from this company, but from others where this was installed very loosely, meaning it was about to fall out, and that was causing the engine to run poorly because it was a vacuum leak. So you definitely want to double check this. Let's see where it's at right now. We'll turn it in. It's one turn, two turns, two and a half, so that's good. We'll just set it back. These are the tanks here that I have to choose from. I've double checked, only the red ones will fit on the Honeywell generator. I think either one will do fine, but there is a little difference. If you look at this one here, this cutout, it's a lot longer than this one right here. So this is probably a higher capacity tank and it most closely resembles the tank that was on that Honeywell. So we'll give that one a try.
that might be an issue. If I try to force it, I'm going to break it. So let's try the other tank. It's a little bit smaller. It might not be quite as tall. Alright, that one fits, kind of. Yeah, it looks pretty good, both inside and out. So I'm going to tighten this down, finish installing it, and I want to get this outside. I guess the only odd thing here is that this tank, it's not a vented cap. Instead, it has the vent over here, and it's supposed to run down to the air box. And the idea behind it is it just burns some of the fumes coming out of the tank instead of venting it into the atmosphere. But I don't think I can really get a line on it. So I'm going to have to leave that as is. It's nice that this kit included a fuel line that actually reaches the fuel petcock. A lot of other kits, they don't reach. So this one, I actually need to cut back just a bit. That's it. Yeah. Doing the easy thing may have just bit me because it's only running on choke. If I go to turn the choke off even halfway, the engine wants to stall. So potentially it's an issue with the carburetor or maybe the flow from the tank. I'm not sure, but I did clean up the original carb and put it back together. So I think I'm going to get that one off. We'll test the flow from the tank, put the original one back on and try this again.
Seems good. I'm going to turn the fuel on, make sure the needle is good. And while waiting for the bowl to fill up, we'll get this plate back installed. got my torque wrench inside. I think I'll just have to wing this one. Try this again. The original carburetor is not doing a better job. It's kind of weird actually what happens. The choke plate popped off that wire right there. So I had no control over the choke. That's why I took the airbox cover off. 
And the thing that really is odd is when I choke the engine, it starts running lean. And when I opened it up, it sounded like it was running rich. I'm not really sure what would cause that. So I'm going to pause it here, give it a bit of thought, and show you what I find. It took a while, but I finally figured it out. And you're not going to believe it because... You saw me test these two carbs. They were running the engine lean, and I also tested with these two off camera. This is a Honda carb and a Predator carb, and all of these ran the engine very lean. So at that point, I said, it's not the carb, it has to be a vacuum leak. So I swapped out the gaskets between the carburetor and the insulator, and the insulator and the engine, and still no difference it was running just as poorly. So I almost didn't swap out the insulator because I thought it looked decent, but I did swap it out for this one, which came from the Predator, the same one that the tank came from. And using this with the old gaskets and the HIPAA carb, the engine runs perfect. So I'm gonna throw this stuff back on and finally load test it. Anyway, you get the idea. You've already seen me do this twice, so I'm going to finish this up and try starting it again. fast.
finally, this is a working generator. And this one, it was supposed to be easy. Just throw on a new carb, throw on a good tank, and call it done. But I definitely got thrown a few curveballs on this one. The first one being the insulator. I haven't come across that issue before. I know it can happen, and it just did. When the insulator is warped or cracked, it'll cause a massive vacuum leak on the intake, and that's what happened here. Now, once it was running well, the governor I wasn't completely happy with. Usually between no load and full load, you have a drop in hertz of about four hertz. It varies a bit between engines, but this one was a little bit excessive because I put a 3000 watt load on it, which is a little more than a half load, and it dropped almost four and a half hertz to 57 and a half. So I added another 2000 watts, bringing it up to 5000 watts, and it held pretty steady. It only dropped a bit and settled on 57 hertz. So not too bad, but not great. I'd probably give it a C minus, but it is passing. And I did double check the governor spring. It's connected in the right spot. It is not damaged. And I also bumped the throttle manually just to make sure the engine wasn't down on power. And it wasn't. So it is purely a sensitivity issue with that governor. So thankfully we're in pretty good shape and I'm glad that carburetor worked out as well. I felt kind of bad because I've used HIPAA products for years and never had a problem with any of them. And I still haven't. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching. I know, stop your typing. I'm gonna get the Predator sticker off of there because this generator cannot peak out at 8,750 watts. It actually peaks out at about 6,875.